Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the channel. This is part two for chronic superative otitis media aticoenteral type, which is unsafe disease or a dangerous disease. Last time we discussed pathophysiology for that, and the link for that is there in the description. You can check it out there. So let's start for today's discussion. This is aticoenteral type, which is dangerous. You are requested to subscribe the channel so you are not going to miss any important topic and get its notification notification in time. So the symptomatology of this aticoenteral type is that this ear discharge which will be there in aticoenteral type. It has got a characteristic features which differentiate it from other type of superative otitis media, which is tubotympanic type. Here, the discharge is scanty, foul smelling due to the underlying bone destruction. And uh, total cessation of discharge is a serious sign. It means that it may have become complicated now. Hearing loss to start with may be normal, but later on there will be conductive type of hearing loss once the ossicular chain is affected. Discharge may be blood stained and this blood may be coming from uh, granulations or the red fleshy polyp if it is present there in the external auditory canal or if the patient tries to clean the inflamed external auditory canal, there may be bleeding. So, earache patient may be having dizziness and tinnitus and if it has become complicated then there will be signs and symptoms of complications. When a, we should suspect that a chronic superator otitis media has become complicated, when there are certain some new symptoms developed within a few days, for example a patient is having chronic superator otitis media with say ear discharge from last three, four, five years, but suddenly within last say two, three, four days, there is vertigo, there is severe pain, there is persistent headache or facial weakness or there is fever, nausea, vomiting, irritability, diplopia, ataxia, abscess around the ear which we call as mastoid abscess, etc. So all these features, they indicate that this underlying chronic superative otitis media has become complicated now and we have to take some active steps now to manage that. Parstensa cholesteatoma signs are that there will be retraction pocket, that retraction pocket will be there in the posterior marginal perforation with cholesteatoma flakes, granulation tissues or polyp which is red fleshy, bleeds on touch and there will be hearing loss. Perforation either in the attic or posterior marginal perforation and it can be missed due to some crust there in that. So the ear should always be examined under microscope. Retraction pocket is due to imagination of the TM. It is seen in the attic again or posterior marginal part of the pars tensor. You used to start with it will be shallow and self-cleaning but later on when it becomes deep and its neck becomes narrowed there will be accumulation of the keratin mass and it becomes infected. Pearly white flakes can be sucked from the retraction pocket. So, grade 1 is slight retracted tympanic membrane not touching the incus. Grade 2 is when deep retraction pocket which is touching the incus with middle ear mucosa is not affected yet. In grade 3 middle ear atelectasis and it lies on the promontory and the ossicles and in grade 4 there will be adhesive otitis media where the tympanic membrane becomes adherent to the promontory. Why it is unsafe? We know that there is single layer of cuboidal epithelium in the middle ear cleft due to crowded structures and improper drainage. 
why is it a foul smelling bony necrosis by the cholesteatoma gram negative infection of the carotene debris and cholesteatoma itself is also foul smelling so when crowded structures are there improper drainage is there so infection is not well controlled and due to the cholesteatoma it expands and ultimately it goes beyond the confines of bony confines of the middle ear flap and involves the surrounding structures which can be extracranial or even intracranial so on history there will be purulent scanty foul smelling discharge which may occasionally be blood stained then associated conditions when it has become complicated there can be post auricular abscess there can be facial nerve paralysis vertigo nystagmus headache on examination one can be able to see blood stain foul smelling purulent nasal discharge or there can be fistula sign positive and we have to go for audiological assessment examination under microscope pus should be sent for culture sensitivity audiological assessment x ray mastoids comparative view ct scan of the temporal bone and then we have to go for basic investigations examination under microscope may be required in case of children after suction and cleaning one can see the marginal perforation granulation tissues or polyps which are red fleshy bleeds on touch or whitish flakes in the middle ear cavity which is due to the cholesteatoma why examination under microscope is must to confirm the otoscopic findings site and size of the perforation margin of the perforation appearance of the middle ear and presence of the polyps and granulation tissues and their site x ray mastoid it will show us the pneumatization of the mastoid air cells either haziness or clouding is there or not or there is low lying tegmen or anterior lying sinus plate because this patient has to be subjected for surgery that will be the mastoid exploration so all these clinic uh, anatomical variations the surgeon must be aware of before opening the mastoid air cell system so here you can see in the previous x ray if you can see these are the normal mastoid air cells you can see the honeycomb system is there but in contrast if you see in this all those partitions in between mastoid air cell system has gone and now this mastoid air cell system has been converted into a single cavity by the disease process ct scan is more helpful it will show us ct scan of the temporal bone will show us the extent of the cholesteatoma normal anatomical structures bony erosion if any or any complication if it is there so on this side you can see the normal mastoid air cell but here you can see all this has been converted into a single cavity and it has become hazy due to the presence of infection or the cholesteatoma pure tone audiogram it will uh, show us what type of hearing loss is there and what is its intensity and degree of hearing loss it will differentiate it from conductive from the sensory neural basic investigations will include the normal cbc then blood sugar blood urea serum creatinine urine analysis ecg and x ray chest depending upon to take the fitness for general anesthesia because the patient has to undergo surgical procedure so signature statement basically is that there is no medical treatment for cholesteatoma associated conditions if any there may be medical treatment for those so the patient should be prepared for general anesthesia broadly we can divide the management plan into three parts first is surgical treatment of the disease itself once this disease is under control then we have to reassess the damage which has been done for example ossicular chain if only long process of incus is being eroded then we can do the ossiculoplasty if whole chain is missing so depending if only the tympanic membrane has gone we can go for meringoplasty so reconstructive surgery will be considered once surgically this disease has been 
under control and this conservative is only option as i said that there is no medical treatment for cholesteatoma or ventral type of disease so this conservative is only when or the very initial stages when there is very small shallow retraction pocket is there the patient should be regularly on follow up or in patients which are unfit for surgery or there is a recurrence of the cholesteatoma then those very few percentage of the patients can be considered for conservative management but that is just uh, that is not a, a curative treatment aims of surgery in this atequental type of disease is to eradicate the disease prevent the recurrence of infection prevent the complications and then restore the function so if you closely observe the first three objectives basically are can be described in a single sentence that to make the ear safe because we know that this is an unsafe or dangerous disease because of the chances of the complications which can be very lethal or life threatening so our first aim is to make the ear safe to restore the function which is regarding of course the hearing it comes at number 2 so there are different surgical procedures which were available depending upon the patient's condition and presentation broadly the mastoid explorations these are divided into two groups one is canal wall up the other one is canal wall down by canal wall means that the posterior meatal wall it is being removed in canal wall down procedures and so that the mastoid antrum middle ear and external ear is converted into a single cavity and these procedures they include atechotomy radical mastoidectomy or modified radical mastoidectomy while in canal wall up procedures the posterior meatal wall remains intact and it includes cortical mastoidectomy and combined approach mastoidectomy so with that we come to end of this session if you think that this uh, all this discussion is helpful for you please like and share with your friends and subscribe the channel in next session we will talk about these surgical procedures a bit in detail about their definitions about their indications and thank you very much for watching